So welcome to the Team Call guys and thank you so much for so many of you making it on live. I think today's topic hopefully will be really useful for all of you. It's certainly something that I do sporadically and I think it's something that we need to revisit um, very, very often. So I'm going to go into kind of the strategies of how to like address your mindset and how to address what your self-limiting beliefs are in a second but firstly I'm just going to go through um, the team call so let me just get the slides okay so let me just move this give it a second okay perfect so noteworthy items for this week Vegan Shakeology, you should be able to get that now, guys, in the UK. I've certainly got some. So if you're having struggles or difficulties ordering it, I suggest that you go into the chat to try and get the order through because I know some of you guys are telling me that it's not on the drop down and things. But I did actually manage to get a hold of mine and my chocolate vegan, I managed to switch over. Um, so just keep an eye on that if you're wanting to switch. Um, pumpkin spice for America and Canada is now live. I think you guys should know about that. I sent out an email and also in the team page. Unfortunately, in the UK, we don't have it. Um, but I believe we are going to get peppermint mocha towards the Christmas period, which I'd much prefer to have. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, 30 day breakaway, just looking at this timeline, I put it at the top. I think the early access from that, from what I understand from Susan Crilly, who was part of the test group, is going to be at the 5th of October is when the early release is going to be. And what I'm likely to do is come up with a strategy for us to potentially all do a 5k charity run. And if not, um, because of COVID, because I think a lot of the runs aren't running, um, to, to actually potentially do one together, like for us in the UK, there might be a group of us that managed to meet up. If not, um, we could do our own one and sponsor each other, either for like the same charity or nominated charity. So just, you know, if, I'll probably put a poll in the team page actually just to get your ideas and thoughts on it as to what you think. I know some of us are either going to come into like two groups. We're either going to be people that love to run and we love the idea or we're, we're going to be the latter, you know, or second group, which is don't love the idea at all. Uh, but maybe I'll do it because it's a team effort. Um, so I thought it'd just be a really fun way to come together as a community to do it um, as a whole. So this is something that was announced this week, and I'm not sure whether you guys actually missed it, but Beachbody Challenge Packs, as of the 8th of September, you are going to be able to get your enrollment sent to anybody, and they are automatically going to include both Ultimate Portion Fix and 2B Mindset. That's the digital access, guys, okay? So they're not gonna get all the books, but they will get the containers, and that will automatically sign them up for the monthly membership. So what I suggest you do is when you're sending out the carts, you make them aware that that monthly me membership is an option, i.e. they don't have to have it. Like I signed up for UPF, but I don't have the monthly membership. Um, but that's pretty amazing. That is such an amazing USP for us because all these platforms that offer workouts, they do not offer nutrition. They certainly don't offer the nutrition courses and they definitely don't come with this incredible containerized program. So that's going to be a real USP for us and it should really help us kind of move our business forward. So I'm super excited about that. Coach Summit, I'm not going to go through the list, but if you haven't got your ticket and you want to go, um, you can literally look on the FAQ on Coach Office and just make sure that you know how to get hold of your summit ticket. If you're a brand new coach, you will want to ensure that you um, hit Success Club three out of your first six months because then you're going to get that summit ticket, which is worth about what 150 to 200 dollars, give or take, um, for free. So that certainly for me as a brand new coach was my motivator. It's why I hit Success Starters. I roped my father-in-law in on that last third month to hit success starters because I wanted that free ticket and it was a non-negotiable for me. So that is going to be huge and um, really hope with COVID by then it will be all over. Um, book of the week. So this is a book that <clears throat> I have heard so many people talking about since I became a coach over two and a half years ago. And it's a book that I actually haven't ever listened or read. And I got the takeaways of the compound effect by accident. So there's like a 10 minute book that summarizes the book and it was so good. 
I said to myself, do you know what? I'm going to get the book. And I started listening to it this morning in Audible. And I was listening to it for about 25 minutes. And honestly, often I find some of these books quite hard to listen to or to concentrate on, but this was amazing. And essentially it's just about how um, your sort of small changes, your small positive improvements over time compound to be the most like phenomenal change. So if you imagine like a, a plane um, moving off on its course and it changes by like half a degree, where you end up is, you know, either up or down. And that's exactly how this compound effect works. But I love the way that this guy talks, the way that he explains everything. It's just, it's just a book that I felt that I could listen to for hours. Um, and I know some of us find it really hard to find a personal development book that we resonate with. So I wanted to just share that. Tracker prize. We had quite a lot of you guys doing your trackers this week. So well done. We had Charlotte, Haley, Joe, Laura Davies, Shannon, Imogen, Gail, Alice, Marta, Stephanie, and Elaine. And the winner this week is Stephanie. So well done for doing that. I will drop you a message or drop me a message to remind me now um, so that I can send you £15 of whatever vouchers you want that I can get hold of for you. So well done. That's amazing. And remember, guys, if you aren't submitting your trackers, in that you're not going to obviously be submitted for the giveaway but also I'm not going to be able to make time for you to have a one-on-one -on -one if you're beyond your first month as a coach and I'm sure you guys will appreciate the team is quite big we're growing quite fast and I only have so many hours in the day so I will just work with the people who are clearly working and, and putting in that work so Emerald Coaches, I am so over the moon to say that in the past sort of three weeks we've had Laura Bates going Emerald, Shania going Emerald and our brand new coach, Liesl, who's been a coach for 10 days, will be Emerald on Thursday. She is coming in like fire. She applied for the Diamond Push Group with some of the most phenomenal coaches in the network that I'm running. And a week into the business, she is already in this Diamond Push Group and she's already told me, I'm ready to run. I've got all the spreadsheets. I know what I need to do. I'm just going to do it. So it's all mindset. Liesl's mindset is absolutely there and I'm going to share obviously more on mindset today but I can promise you that success where you go in this business is 95% your mindset. So we have a brand new Ruby coach um, she's not on the call because she's working nights bless her but Charlotte is I mean she's unbelievably close to diamond she's one coach away but Ruby so you know guys is super rare it's really rare I've never had a Ruby coach in my team. A Ruby coach is when somebody gets two emeralds, okay? If they have one emerald on the left and one emerald on the right, they go Ruby. Um, so I didn't even realize that Charlotte was going to do that because she's so close to Diamond. We're so kind of focused on that, that actually she went Ruby, which really just so that you guys understand is indicative of the fact that Charlotte is building deep, not wide. It shows that she's actually building a team where she's teaching them how to build as well. Um, and it means that when she builds her Diamond, it's, it's likely to be a lot stronger. So um if you haven't caught her live, by the way, guys, in the team page, it is absolutely amazing. And the UK corporate director wanted to have a look at it. And he said, she's so amazing that I'm going to get her to do a live in the business builders page for the UK. She's insane. She shared her top five tips for success in such a professional way. 24 year old girl. I don't think I've ever seen somebody with such business now with such maturity and such energy. So definitely watch that. It was a super simple breakdown of how to see success, but definitely watch it. It will really help you. Okay. With that being said, closest to Diamond, we have Charlotte, then Donna, Ginny, Marty, Joe creeping up there and Tasha. And these guys are actually all going to be in the new Diamond Push group. Um, so I am just going to share what that is with you guys now, although it probably is a bit too late to join, but this diamond push is the most exciting group that I think we will see possibly for a year. And the reason for that is that last week I was messaging some of the guys in the elite push group that I'm in with Josh Coates and, um, some girls were saying, do you want to do a time of push group? And I said, well, I'm doing one on the seventh. And they said, oh, well, let's all team up. Now, incidentally, the, there's five of us running that group. One of the coaches is directly in Danielle and Tony's downline. She's been a coach for eight years. She's been elite six, six times. Um, I've also got another coach who is just an absolute firecracker. She's already three-star premier for this year. Um, and Lindsay Weiss, who is my upline upline, and she's been a coach for eight years. So there's a huge amount of girls in there pushing for diamond. The girls that are in the group know about it. We've all been introducing ourselves. It is a baptism of fire. We have to share our trackers every day, but I can promise you that these girls that are in this group are going to come out with some sensational 
roast. It's really, really exciting. So if you haven't got in there and you're desperate to get in there, you will need to submit your vision and your goals to me. The last two weeks of your completed business activity track advice by today um, and you need to be an active emerald okay um so yeah so it's re i'm really excited for those guys and the diamond retreat so that's getting really really close now oh just flick past it so 23rd 25th of october you need to be a lifetime diamond rank and you need to have held it for six weeks and it is by the 10th of september so coming super close and i know we have some girls still absolutely gunning for it but we're already kind of planning outfits and photographers and everything else so for social media, it's going to be pretty huge. I can't wait for that. Um, success starters. So we've got Joe in month one, Gail in month one, and Beckett in month one. And for month two, we have Shannon, Zainab, and Haley who hit month two last month. And I know she's making hitting success club in her third month an absolute non-negotiable. So well done, guys. If they hit success club in their third month, they get their summit ticket for free. And you get access to one of the coach test group programs, which will likely be possibly too late for control freak um, i'm not sure what the next one will be and do you know what i meant to put the september um success club board in here but i <laughs> i didn't so i can only apologize um so for september the success club incentive and that's meant to say september so sorry this slides a bit off but september the incentive if you hit the success club in september is you're going to get 25 pounds or 25 dollars of bow and tea vouchers if you go onto their website this is bow and tea their stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I ordered a set which I was wearing today and yesterday in my post. Um, Charlotte hit Success Club 10 last month, so I sent her um, 50 pounds worth of bow and tea vouchers and she ordered a little set and they are absolutely gorgeous. And if you hit Success Club 10, and this is where I want all of you guys to be, I want you guys to, to think to yourself, Success Club 6 is what I should be doing weekly. Success Club 10 should be what I'm doing every month, right? If you're doing Success Club 10 every month, you're helping five people. That's basically one person a week. And if you're an Emerald coach, you're going to get all of these free leads that are going to give you immediate income because you're going to earn commission from them when they come in. So if you want to build your business with a residual income where you're moving through the ranks, which is what you'll need to do if you want to build a residual income, Success Club 10 needs to be the goal. Success Club 6, I want to be honest, will see you continue to flip-flop in and out diamond and not kind of moving forward. And I've learned that through experience. I just wanted to share that. If you hit Success Club 10, you're going to get £75 or $75 of Bow & Tea vouchers this month. So I'm super excited for that. Um, so coming on to the main topic of the call, and you'll definitely need a pen and paper for this guy. So if you don't have one, just definitely get one in hand because this is something that you can do now, but it is something that you can do, um, after the call or tomorrow, or, you know, strategically when you're feeling like, oh, do you know what? I can't do this because of that. Um, so first of all, I'm going to start by saying, what stories do you keep telling yourself? Okay. And you're probably going to say, I don't tell myself any stories. You do. We all do. Okay. So I put some examples um, up here. Um, and, you know, as a coach, I want to be honest, we are in a business where comparison is the thief of joy. Number one, comparison can be really, really easy to slip into that um, death trap of comparison, I like to say. Um, and I really want you guys, firstly, before we go into this, to call to question whether or not you go into social media to do your income producing activities or whether you go in there to scroll every other coach's stories to see what they're doing. Because if it's the latter, you need to stop that. Now, I don't ever go and watch other people's stories unless I'm getting on a one-on-one -on -one with them and I wanna see how their strategy is. Or maybe I've got two coaches that I like the look of what they do and I, I tend to just go to those two pages. Other than that, I'll be honest, I don't watch all of the stories and that, point where I decided that I wasn't going to allow myself to waste time going into Instagram when I was working my business to literally scroll other people's pages. Like how dare I disrespect my time by going to do my income producing activities and then not treat my business like a business by scrolling every other person's stories. Like what is that doing for your business? So I want to call you out on that today. If you do that, you've got to stop it because you will never ever See that success in your business because one you're wasting the time your time blocks are being swallowed up by you wondering or worrying about what somebody else is doing and how they're doing it better and number two 
it's going to make you feel like SHIT. I used to do it when I was a new coach, and I can promise you the moment when I really started accelerating was when I just literally didn't give an SHIT what anyone else was doing. I was executing my own plan, my own goals, my own sneak peeks, my own challenge groups, and I didn't worry about anyone else, what anyone else was doing. I trusted in myself and thought, you know what, if that person over there is doing that, that's fine, but I'm not doing that because I'm my own person. I've got my own plan and I'm sticking to it. And that is the point that I see success. And I can promise you that in the periods where I've had less success, it's when I'm worrying about what other people are doing. So I just want to, that one is so common in the coach business. I just want to call that one out. Um, but yeah, what do you keep telling yourself? Like, I'm not fit enough. I have less time than her. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not young enough. I don't have the right personality. I don't have enough confidence. I will fail at this. I always fail. People tell me I don't have the skill set. Could be somebody in your household. Usually that's the worst. Usually they're the people most likely to say that sort of thing. People tell me it's only for those rare few who work, okay? They're just a few that I could think of off the top of my head. And I can tell you, number one, that for every single one of those, there is a coach within the network who you will look at who you think defines what that description is, okay? There are coaches in the network who are a lot older than other people. There are people in the network who aren't that attractive. There are people who literally are in the top 10 and they work full-time as a lecturer. They have two kids at home and they work their business on the side. So whatever you tell yourself, it is not true. And I want to say that that is something where we need to become really aware of what that story is. What story do I, we tell ourselves? And the other reason why typically we tell ourselves these stories is that it's actually easier for us. It's easier for us if we tell ourselves a story, because if we tell ourselves the story, then we don't have to even give it a try. We can just give up and it's easier to give up than it is to move forward because then we don't risk failure and then we don't risk embarrassing ourselves and it's easier and we can go, do you know what? Not for me, right? So I want you guys to really think about that. And, and in the next kind of two minutes, I'm literally going to get you guys to get an A4 sheet of paper and on the left, write down whatever comes out of your mind in terms of what you now recognize as your self-limiting beliefs or what you tell yourself when you, you decide that, you know what, Success Club this month's too hard or actually it's not going to happen or it's because I'm X or Y. Give yourself two minutes now, and it might be some of these on here, but I think you'll astonish yourself probably at how many there are. Um, that they could be all that they could be anything. They could be and it's like completely different to anything I've put here. Okay. So three, two, one, go. And I'm gonna do mine. Okay, so that was two minutes. So hopefully you've had enough time. Um, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a, a line down the middle and then the other side, <clears throat> I want you to think about why those statements aren't true because they're not true, number one, because that's just what you tell yourself and that's just what your brain has thought up. They're not true or fact. 
And I also want you to think about why they're not true based on previous experiences you've had where you've, um, you've proved that that statement isn't true, okay? So that it is front and center of your mind, okay? So it could be with Beachbody, it could be in your current career or job, it could be to do with like being a mum, it could be to do with when you're at school or university, it could be any example that proves that that statement that you've made that when you decide to let yourself off the hook isn't true, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys another couple of minutes. Okay, perfect. Well done, guys. Does anyone want to share one of theirs, like what they've written and what they've put down? Um, maybe just put it in the comments or unmute yourself. It might just be quite useful for, you know, for someone to share theirs if they want to. I'll share mine, Izzy. Yeah, definitely. Go, Haley. <laughs> okay, so um, in the lies that I tell myself, Sorry, I might get a little emotional on this one. <laughs> but in the lies that I tell myself, I put, I'm not worthy of coaching. I'm not strong enough to coach. I'm not smart enough, organized enough, enough, have the leadership qualities. And that being into fitness makes me less spiritual. And those are obviously all lies that I tell myself. And here on the other side, um, I am worthy of coaching because I work on myself daily so I can better help others. I am strong enough to coach because I left an abusive relationship to be a single mother and work on my own health so I could be a better mother for her. I am smart enough and I study to grow my intelligence daily. I am organized and I have the ability to create systems. I am a strong leader and I can guide people to their success. And being into fitness makes me more spiritual because I am pouring into my body making it stronger for myself so that I can be more present in every moment. That's amazing, Haley. Absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for sharing. I know, you know, like asking you guys to share that stuff is quite vulnerable and really quite hard. And I know like asking you to do that, I felt a bit bad, but actually that is just a perfect example of something that absolutely really shares your deepest vulnerabilities, your, de your deepest kind of doubts, your biggest doubts and the biggest things that hold you back. And can you see how Haley's flipped that on its head? And that's absolutely amazing. And, and guys, this stuff here, don't take this stuff lightly because what we're doing here is the key to all of those blocks you have with your business where you say like, I can't, you know, when you think about when you're doing well, what are you doing? When you're not doing so well and you're finding it difficult, what are you doing? 
it's the self-limiting beliefs. And if we don't scratch beneath that surface and really dig them out and, and really overcome them and work on them by writing them down and writing down why they're not true, it doesn't matter what we do with our bats or our business or our stories. It just won't, it won't fly. It won't stick because deep down subconsciously we're telling ourselves that, you know, in, in Haley's case, I'm not worthy. Um, you know, that's quite a common one. Um, you know, Kelsey Hill at the national, um, the new leaders conference said, um, you know, she's now like top 10. She said that she didn't feel as though she deserved it. She didn't feel as though she deserved it. And so that always held her back. And she wrote an affirmation around it, which said, I am deserving. So um, in that breath, what I want you to do now so that you've got these tangible um, affirmations that you can use in your day to write down i would suggest you write them down every morning particularly if you've got you know if you've got these self-limiting beliefs which we all have we all have them they are so deep lodged that they play around in our subconscious and often we're not even aware of them okay so to dislodge them or change our truth which is what we tell ourselves is is going to take work and it is going to take conscious work and that's the kind of stuff that you need to do in the morning so i write down affirmations in the morning um i write down this year i will achieve all i'm capable of achieving i write i'm an amazing compassionate leader that's because i'm quite red so i can be quite blunt but it doesn't mean that i don't care um i am deserving you know some they're just some of mine i write down about 15 or 20 of them every morning guys and that takes me about five minutes but i can promise you it's really shifted my business um oh tasha thanks for these limiting beliefs i'm too busy truth there are busier people than me with kids who work multiple jobs and I do this full time. I don't have enough time because I didn't get enough sleep. I always get enough sleep. I'm not too tired. I have a perfect amount of time. Yeah, it really was amazing, Hayley. Um, and for you, Tasha, the miracle morning would be amazing because it calls you out on like our definition of why we need sleep. And it basically, they did an experiment and said, actually, we, none of us need eight hours sleep. That's just what we tell ourselves. But the miracle morning was really what helped me shorten my sleep routine and actually feel just as energized so that might be a good one for you um thanks for sharing those tasha and and now guys just for the next two three minutes let's have you write down an affirmation so an affirmation is going to be the opposite of that i.e it's going to be a super positive affirmation written down you know when you write them down in the morning you should probably say them out loud as well because the act of doing that and writing it down really helps you dislodge those things you tell yourself, those stories you tell yourself. Okay, um, has anyone got another comment in there? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes, off we go. Okay, awesome. Does anyone want to share an affirmation they've written? I can share one. Yeah, we'd love that. Um, 
mine are kind of short because I'm going by like those limiting beliefs, but yeah. Um, my limiting belief was I'm not doing it right. And I wrote that I am unique and I have my own unique style and flow. That's who I am. Um, I wrote, I don't have the energy. And the uh, affirmation I wrote for that is I have passion and my energy comes from my masculine self. I do this consistently. Um, That's amazing. Another one. I have nothing exciting to share in my life. I have a beautiful life and I do what I love and I share what it is that I love. Um, I can't motivate others to do the business. I am responsible for my actions and my reactions, nobody else's. Um, and then I think people will find out that I'm fake. Um, I am a true leader and an inspiration to those who need me at that moment. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that last one you said, the imposter syndrome, that's quite common as well. And that's one that we see quite a lot where, and I see this sometimes with coaches where they have a really good streak and then, and then they're like, no, 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 this isn't me. That, that kind of like, how did that happen? How did I ever do that? How would I ever do that again? That's not me. Like, I'm not a leader. And, and that's kind of exactly what you've shared with that affirmation and that imposter syndrome um, can be so destructive, but it's quite common. Um, so that was a really great one to share. Thanks, Marty, for that. Um, just looking at these comments here. Stephanie, I am confident and have everything I need to succeed. People want to see my journey and are interested in my progress from my point in time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is something actually that I wasn't going to share, but since Marty was just talking about it, it reminded me of something that Josh shared on our call on Thursday. And he has something that he does and he talks about how spirituality massively comes into our success. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's God. It can be any form of spirit for us. And I think certainly energetically, I feel that, you know, personally, like mine is my mum. Like I have a feather on my pin board. I wear my mum's ring all the time. That's my kind of my spiritual energy. And some of you guys might not connect with that so much if you haven't done much on that. Some of you might. Um, but what Josh shared, and Josh is a pastor's son, so um, you can understand kind of his spirituality side of things and where that's come from. And he said, um, lean into your source. Um, Arthur. Okay, Arthur, can you please go out? I'm in the middle of a call. Thank you. <laughs> Um, he said, lean into your source. Okay. So he said, lean into that. And he has some things that he writes, which I absolutely loved. And he said, um, I'm an infinite source of strength. I'm an in infinite source of creativity. I'm an infinite source of power. I'm an infinite source of knowledge. I'm an infinite source of grace. Um, and uh, I have an infinite flow of charisma is another one that he said. And, and it's really just about knowing that your, your strengths, your abilities to be anything you want come from source, i.e. they come from a level where there's infinity of every single quality, which I really liked. And I just thought it's so true. Like why, why would we not have that? Why, why isn't that available to you? Um, and I, I really liked the way that he spoke about it. So I thought I would just share that. Um, And he said, confidence is being aware of strengths and not denying weakness. I.e., you're not saying you don't have weaknesses, but you're recognizing where your strengths are and working on your weaknesses, which I really liked. So, um, yeah, being acutely aware of the voices um, in your heads, whatever they might be, when do they show up? You know, being really conscious of when they show up. And this is certainly the, something that I do. As soon as that voice creeps in, that is my limiting self belief. As soon as they creep, creep in I'm always telling myself they're not true and why they're not true so if you can become really aware of them you can become a lot quicker at flipping the switch on them which is ultimately going to define your success guys so flipping the switch on them and not allowing yourself to dwell in them okay so just again it's just becoming aware of what's going on um and do you allow yourself to be let off the hook when they do and I think that one really links back to vision if I think about my own approach with my limiting self-beliefs and then do I ever let myself off the hook? No, I never let myself off the hook. I never say, do you know what? It's not going to work because of X, Y, Z. 
I always come back to why I know I can do it for whatever reason that might be. And I always come back to my vision and my vision drives me every morning. It is so strong that there's not a cat's chance that I'm going to not perform in the way that I would that day. Like every single day I'm going to show up. Um, so create daily affirmations from your strengths and areas that you tell yourself you have weakness and don't let the bad guys creep in. It becomes, it comes between you and your dreams. And I think this is so key. Like it's, it's probably pretty obvious, but that seriously guys is what is going to come between you and your dreams or your visions or your goals, whatever they might be. If you're not achieving those goals or those visions or those dreams, I strongly suspect it's a self-limiting belief that you're allowing to occupy here which is just going to stop you every step of the way. Okay. So moving forward, I would advise you to do that. Like you can do that task maybe once every two months, but definitely the affirmations that you've written so that then obviously when those, those limiting self beliefs come into your mind, you, you will have that affirmation so front and center of your mind that you will just flip the switch on it. And with my affirmations, I write them out every day. And I literally, I, I sometimes, without even noticing, I'm repeating them as I go through the day for whatever reason. You know, maybe like I'm having a moment of struggle and I'll just say to myself, I'm amazing. And I don't laugh at that anymore. I did when I started doing them and I started doing personal development. I thought it was all a bit stupid. Um, you know, I might say them to myself in the shower. You know, it really, really helps. It really makes such a huge difference. Um, so... This is something else that links into your limiting self-beliefs. And this is something that certainly I've experienced. And so I wanted to share it. When you get busy and you have a clear structure in your day and you've sedimented daily habits with your business, i.e. you have a set time that maybe you meditate and you write out your goals and your vision and a set time that you work out, you know, whether or not you work full time, guys, you can still have structure in your day, even if, if you have to flip it around and change it day by day, which certainly when I started, I was working three different jobs and I had Arthur and nursery two mornings a week. You know, I definitely um, had to have a clear structure, but it wasn't always in the same order, right? As it is for me now, right? I have the ability to do that most of the time, although Arthur goes to school to 1 p.m. this week. So again, I'm gonna have to flip it on its head. So I'm constantly just redressing the balance, but you become far more disciplined but most importantly, you don't have time to dwell in those voices. You just don't. You, you have such a clear structure of what needs to get done and in what time block, hence why time blocking is so important, even for mindset, that you don't, you, I just, when I'm doing my time blocks, I don't allow those voices to come in. I don't have time. I'm on a timer, you know, voices in my head, goodbye, off I go. Yeah. So that's meant to say catalyst. Taking action is the greatest catalyst for silencing negative thoughts and I really really strongly believe that if you get busy and you get busy doing the right things in your business you'll probably find that all of that time and if you call yourself out on this probably some of you will find that actually you're spending quite a lot of time watching other people's stories worrying about what they're doing worrying about if you're doing it right make a commitment today to just get your blinders on and stop doing that. Okay. And that actually when your mind drifts down that path, that you're going to become really aware of just how much time you're wasting because that's not running your business at all. That's just wasting time. It'd be better to spend it watching Netflix. Um, and that's it. So I'm just going to, um, stop screen sharing. Let's move this down. There we go. Okay. Someone has another comment in there. What did that comment say? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to read this last comment that went in. Yeah. So has anyone got any questions or any comments or anything they want to share about their affirmations and their limiting self-beliefs with the group? Like definitely, if you feel you want to, I'm, I know it's beneficial for everyone. I don't feel you have to. No. Well, thank you everyone that did. I think it was really useful. Hopefully it's, it's going to be a really, really helpful task for you. And I would just say like, if you put into action what we've just discussed, I think you'll be really amazed by how much you see your mindset shifting um, to just be really aware of that stuff. Um, so I'm just going to,